So I've been watching people making folios for their ephemera and I thought maybe it would be nice to have something a little bit better. I mean, this is great, but um, I'm constantly digging through it. We'll put the letters upside down, that's it. Um, to find what I want. I mean, obviously there's some I haven't even used. Well, I used some A's. <laughs> Anyway, so I have all this stuff and in different sizes and yeah, cut in half so it would fit in the thing. But then I also have, and they're getting damaged in there because they just get shoved in there and stuff gets shoved in with it. Um, but I want something that will hold, let's see what size this is. I don't want to do it bigger than a folder. Alright, that one might get chopped in half. Because I want it to fit inside here so that wherever I end up putting this, it fits. Um, height and width wise. And then I'm going to create it so it would be like a folio. So flip flop, you know, the whole thing. Flip flop flop. So we're going to sort through this stuff. So the really big ones over there, but I just want to be able to find stuff and okay, so those are sentences, right? So I decided to speed speed this way up because there's a lot of stuff to sort through and I left it in, most of it. I think I fade out here in a little bit because it was way too much to go through <laughs> in the end. Um, but I really wanted to make a folio. I've made a few different types of folios for like that hold photos, but I um, thought this would be fun. And it was inspired by Kylie Koo and the Facebook group she's in. And she did a folio for some ephemera, and I'm like, oh, I could do that. I have my ephemera in other places, but um, yeah, all these words and letters and things need a better home. So, yeah, that's where I faded out. <laughs> so I'm taking this folder that I was using, obviously, for vellum. I'm trimming off the tab, and I'm going to um, glue another piece on there so that I, it folds over. And I think I have a blue hanging folder that I take and add to it what happens. This is a really long video and I don't have measurements because I just based it off of what I already had. So the, the folder I want it to do be folder size. Um, I, I know it's going to need a lot of space so I gave it, I don't know, is that two inches? I think it might be two inches. Um, of a spine so that it would really have a lot of space inside. And so that's where I'm scoring that at. All right. And I decide that that's going to have an addition. Well, at least it, I think at the time I'm doing this, I'm thinking that's going to have something attached to it. So we might as well straighten that up and take off that section. So that's why I do that. Okay, so now I'm going to take this hanging folder and just take off the sections that have the little hangers attached to them on both sides. And I, I need to get a fresh blade. I need to go buy some. There's, there's a few people that have that yellow one, the retractable 
that it looks like you pop off the end when it gets dull. I need to find me one of those. Because they always seem to have really sharp blades. Because <laughs> I'd be going through them, I'd be snapping. I'd still snap it off. Go to the next one. <laughs> Maybe they're not too expensive. I don't know. I haven't seen them anywhere. So. Alright, so I've cut that off. Now I want to make sure they're the same width or height. What's, which direction is that? <laughs> and it just needs just a little bit trimmed off. So maybe like an eighth of an inch. So close. There we go. Now, I want to, you know, I, and looking back, I'm thinking about it. I probably could have given it, how much was that tab? Maybe a half an inch. I, pro I could have given it that extra half an inch, but I didn't. Um, which is fine. I Sorry, I pulled it out to look at it. <laughs> uh. So I'm also giving that side a thicker spine. Not quite as thick as the other side. Um, a little bit less. Oh, and trimming that off because we're going to glue it on, so, yeah. And I used that middle fold because it has like the, I don't know what I'm talking about. I just used the middle fold that was already there because I figured why not. Making sure I've got the right side of this. Trying to make sure it's lined up. That's the hardest part for me is <laughs> making things straight. And that glitter glue, man, it's, it sticks fast. Gotta be quick. Sorry if this is too fast, but it was over an hour. And I don't think my iPad where I edit could handle downloading an hour's video. <laughs> Guess I could have made it in two parts, but I didn't know where to cut it in half, so. All right, so this is, um, so on the inside, the center piece, I'm going to have like a, like flaps that you tie down. So this is going to be one side of it, like an, kind of like an envelope. Do they call them legal envelopes? Document holders? I don't know. But you'll see. So I'm scoring it in multiple places so that it, again, so it can expand if needed. I've had this hanging folder for quite a while, so when I was doing the folds on it, I was a little worried that I was... Uh, gonna crack the paper but it worked okay it's still good again adding my glitter glue This is going to go near the main spine, the bigger spine, and yeah, it takes me a little bit to get that lined up right. In fact, I moved around so much, I think I have to put more glue on it at some point. Yeah, see? <laughs> it's like, let's just add some more glue, because moving things around too much. Okay that lined up. I don't want it to interfere with the spine, but it can be really close to it. I 
And I decide I want that to angle in and not be square across. So I'm just going to take my scissors and cut. And we'll just take that to the other side so we get an even cut. I'm just going to round the corner just a little bit. All right, so there's what we've got so far. So that's just going to help things not slide out. And then I'm going to take the other piece of the folder and create the top and bottom flaps for my document envelope. I could have had a right flap and a left flap and a top and bottom, but I just went with one. I would have had to find more paper to do. And I don't think, like I said, I don't think it's necessary. So I'm just scoring these so for the fold. And then I'm going to give it an angle, just a slight angle. Do the same thing on the other side. in my corners. And again with this one, doing the same thing. And really I'm not following any kind of plan. I've looked at, I've watched several folio videos and I just kind of liked um, Kylie Coos and just kind of put together what I thought would work for what I have. And yeah, using supplies that I already have. So for the little spots. I See, I don't even know what these things are called that you tie the string around when you're closing one of those document envelopes. Um, I just punched with one of my circle punches a couple of layers of watercolor paper and glued them together so they'd be extra thick. And then I'm going to punch holes and then use my tool to attach them all together. I decided I needed to use to measure to um, find the center because I'm really bad at getting right in the center. I think it's still not quite <laughs> in the center. All right. So we're going to punch the holes into these. And then I decide I need to... Um, Instead of just punching those, I would try to find center. So I'm just eyeballing, but lining it up on my grid so that I have a center. Oh, and then I go and decide that maybe I need a spacer between the circle and the other. So I take these little ones and punch a hole in them and just use that as a spacer. I don't know if it helped or if it hinders, but that's what I did. So I'm just going to stack those all and punch it. Okay, 
Now that that's done, oh, I decided to add a couple more score marks to give it expandability. Probably could have done this, reduce this down to where you only see me do one item when it's repeating. Sorry about that. But at least just if you're watching, if you're still watching, <laughs> at least you're going to see it twice, right? In case you missed it the first time. I don't know. All right, so we're going to open this up and they're going to go on the top and on the bottom. So we're going to add the glue. And the plan is just to center it in between the folds. Okay, I lied. <laughs> I think that's what I was thinking, and then I um, end up centering it on the white section, where it totally could have been in part of the blue section as well. It's probably why it looks the way it looks. Yeah, okay, well... I think I was thinking that was center. I'm not sure. But it works just fine. And then I'm aligning it with the very edge of the original folder so that it um, has maximum space for my taller sheets of alphabet. Gosh, and you know, some of this alphabet stuff I've had for ever. I really need to use it. Even if I do like a mixed media piece and use my dimensional alphabet and like, I don't know, create sculptural sort of elements with it. Okay, so on this side of the flap, I want to do pockets. But I'm going to have to sew them, hand sew them, so that they don't pop off because I've done little folio books with uh, vellum paper and glue and they just pop off. So I'm going to use this um, sort of glittery paper and I'm going to sew it to that and then I'll glue that down to the base. And I probably should have put it under weight for a lot longer, maybe put the glue on there a little bit better. It's a little warped on the back side but it's okay. It'll be fine. So I'm just taking, um, I don't think this is even sheet protector. This was like a envelope that you put artwork in. I had bought some and had, uh, I have quite a few left over. So I decided to use that because it's pretty sturdy and I'm going to glue it down and then I'm going to sew it down. And I don't have a sewing machine, so yeah, it's going to be hand sewn. <laughs> and I do have one side that's longer, so I figured I would fold it over just to make it even more secure. And that's only on the one side. But I don't think it was really necessary. I think just gluing it straight to the edge because it's being sewn that flap over wasn't really necessary and then we're going to do the top pocket and it was a double pocket and I think I decide to just make it a single the bottom one I left as a double so there's there are two actual pockets behind each other, but I think that only serves to confuse you when you're trying to pull something out of the pocket. At now, anyway, after the fact, right? <laughs> so 
I'm trimming it down just a little bit so there's a little bit of gap between the top pocket and the bottom pocket. I'm trying to crease that fold so it will stay. So I'm going to glue that down just like that. And I'm doing a lot of fiddling, trying to get it to stay put. That's the hard part. Put something on there to hold it down. I roll a tape. <laughs> All right, so now that's pretty much set up. I'm going to flip it over and glue the fold sides that I had done. Fold both of those over. And then I remember, oh yeah, I have... Um, two layers on that one so it has to have extra glue. You don't see that part but and it takes longer for it to dry because it's plastic on plastic. So I'm just going to clip that while I work on the next step. Okay. So I'm pulling out my book binding thread and my sponge. Oh, and I poke, I think I poke one or two holes and then realize it's going all the way through the sponge right into my um, protective cover on my table. Probably right into my table. So then I grab a board and stick it underneath. Oh yeah, I did a few, didn't I? Oh goodness. Yeah, I think I have a trail of little dots on my protective surface. Oh, I don't even do it? Okay, it must have been later on when I'm sewing another spot that I end up um, putting the board down to protect the table. So I'm just going to stitch this up all along. I made those marks maybe a quarter of an inch apart. I can't remember. And I'm just um, doing kind of a wrapping sort of stitch. Um, and I don't make you watch the whole thing. I think I only do two or three stitches before I move on. <laughs> I can't remember where I cut uh, cut out, but it um, should be soon. All right, so the, see there, now it's all stitched. And now I'm just going to take it, I'm going to glue it right down onto that. So this time I am taking some Elmer's glue. And just pouring it. This is the back side, by the way. <laughs> In case you can't tell. And I used a sponge. I should have used a card. Maybe that would have gotten it a little bit more evenly distributed. I mean, this works. It's fine. And then I just go around the edges with um, the fine tip of the glitter glue to make sure I get all the way to the edges. Give a little extra glue to those threads. Help them hold in. Maybe. And then I put that down, and I put some weight on top of it and let it dry. I left it for a few hours, I believe. I put the board on there, and I stuck a bunch of um, books on top. I, 
it sh should have sat longer drying, but I was impatient, and I'm moving on. <laughs> so I have some recycled sheet protectors. They're not perfect, but um, I figured they would work for this. They, I can't do them full size, because if I do, then they will um, interfere with the opening and closing. They'll be too big for the book. So I'm just taking them down, and I, by that I mean I'm I'm going to fold them where I'm creasing them, and that's where I'll stitch them with a pamphlet stitch together, like a little sheet protector book. So now I'm stacking them all, every other one, so that it'll be evenly distributed. I figured that'd be a good way to do it. And they're very slippery. This was really hard to to keep together and stitch. So instead of pre-poking the holes, I poke as I go. You'll see. So I'm going to take a little piece. So I have this um, left of the folder and I'm just going to trim off a section of that and use it to stitch the um, sheet protectors too. I'll make sure it's the right length. It does go through a fold, but that'll be glued down in the end, so it will be okay. Trying to find the middle. I'm giving it a crease. Now poke, bringing out my pokey tool again. Still trying to figure out how to get this to work because <laughs> it's so slippery. So this is where I decide I would hook it together with the little spine and um, punch and sew all at the same time. Which is not a bad idea for a pamphlet stitch book because some of the times when I do it, it ends up misaligned. Here's where I poke too hard and poke a hole all the way through. I'm grabbing a needle, I think. Sorry, I'm not, I didn't thread that on. Oh yeah, see, there's, you can actually see the hole <laughs> when I've Lifted that up really quickly. Just attach that with a binder clip so it doesn't come undone. I think right there I just decided how many I was going to do. I think that's about an inch and a half apart. I'm not doing exact measurements, I'm just eyeballing it. Oh, and that's not a needle. I used, um, so, so, I don't know who showed me this, but they have this thing, like if you have difficulty getting dental floss between your teeth, to floss your teeth, there's this little plastic thing that you can, it's like a plastic needle that you can um, thread the dental floss through and then stick it through your teeth and then thread the dental floss through your teeth. That's what I am using. So the hole needs to be big enough that I can get that through without any trouble. But it works great. So I just keep stitching along and you probably don't need to see me do this whole thing. So I'm going to jump. Alright, so 
then I'm just going to tie the centerpiece. I had intended on skipping that when I came back that direction, but got carried away, kept stitching. But, you know, just time together, it works. <laughs> so there is my little pamphlet. <laughs> Alright, so now we've got our little folio. I'm pushing down on it, try and get it to um, stay folded. But, um... Eventually, it's, it lays just fine in my book, in my folio. So, I take it and I glue it into the right-hand side. And I'm sorry it didn't show part of it being glued in. But I glue that down and then I put another piece. I found another folder. So, I put another piece of the folder on the other side to create kind of a page. And really that's tried it to try and contain the sheet protectors because they, they're floppy and they flop all over. And I could probably create a flap for that and fasten it in so that it, you know, anyways, it's contained. But there's that. And this other one really jumps a bit. I just wanted something for the left-hand side, so I cut down a piece of the folder that I found and I'm going to glue that down. I, I put the elastic string around it. I'm going to glue that down, put it under weight, and then I can slip things in there. And yeah, another place to hold stuff. And since I did this video, I actually found another thing to put in here to hold more stuff because I had words in another place, so I created another um, thing. And that'll be another video, a short video. I'm pretty sure I recorded it. <laughs> but I'm just going to glue that down, put it under weight, and then I think that is it done. I do just have it held together with a string. And coming right now is a walkthrough. Okay, so here it is. I don't know, is that weird to have it like shorter? I probably will have to come up with some sort of fastening to hold it all together, but here it is. You want to see? I bought, filled it all up. So the first side, this is where the elastics are, is holding like my tall sheets. And I just got a lot of zone. Hopefully that'll hold up. Not stretch out too badly. And then I have... Um, well, let's go with this. This is where I put these pockets. And they're holding lots more. And then I have my cut-up words in these two. And I, I stitched them so I could, like... You know, I didn't have to worry about them popping off. But I didn't want the stitches back here, so I stitched it onto the brown. Well, it's metallic, but I want to. It even holds this envelope that had the rub ons that we saw earlier. So there's that. And then all those big sheets, well, and more. <laughs> and everything else that wouldn't fit in any other compartment. And I probably have that too much, but. De designed for expansion, right? So that's whew, open that way and this way. And that just holds all this stuff. Stay. There. So this has all of these and my papers. That words. Yeah. And I just put this there so that it wouldn't like slide out. At least that's the idea behind that one. And that's why I scored it there so it um, could expand. Okay, it might be a little long, but. <laughs> and the only reason that's there is to keep, to make it easier to fold.
pulled that out of the way for that. And I guess I could put some pockets on here if I wanted to. You know. Or maybe even glue some envelopes or something. So I'd have more tuck spots there. There we go. A very full. Like it's it's fatter than that was. Well that was pretty fat, but um, I feel like I can see things better. So, that was my goal. I'm shedding, apparently. There we go. Anyway. What do you think? Should I do something right here? Should I add something to hold something? Or a fastener. I think for now I might just tie that shut. That string is not going to go around it. <laughs> uh, what have I got? Nothing. Anyway, I hope you liked that. If you did, leave me a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And if you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.